And it's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast entering two legends in dentistry. And uh, my gosh, they should be a role model for everyone. Adam Marburger is a serial entrepreneur that lives his life in the following buckets, automotive, real estate, insurance, dental, and martial arts. He's the president and CEO of Ascent Dealer Services, an insurance agency specializing in building wealth for automotive, RV, and power sports dealers across the country. His tremendous track record in retail automotive landed him the title of Automotive News 40 Under 40 Mm -hmm. in 2018, which landed him as one of the most sought-after coaches in the industry. Adam plays the role of president and CEO of the Marburger Investment Groups and A2 Investments. These companies focus on residential and commercial real estate. His passion for real estate started in his early 20s when he met his mentor who paved the way. Today, Adam is still acquiring new properties and adding them to his portfolio. Adam also owns Marburger Coaching and Developing. This company specializes in professional coaching and mentoring. Adam is on a bold mission to help as many people as possible and level up in their vocations and personal lives. Adam's martial arts company is very close to his heart. He owns and operates Alton Family Martial Arts and Fitnesses located in Alton, Illinois. Adam is a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, wow, that just blows my mind. And holds national champion and six-time world medalist titles. Adam is undefeated in boxing, kickboxing, and mixed martial arts. Today, he is sharing his love for martial arts with his community. Adam is the co-founder of Dental Protection Group. The DPD specializes in helping dental practices build wealth in most tax-friendly environments via dental warranties. Adam recently has been awarded the title of best-selling author and is now being asked to keynote events all over the world. His love for writing and speaking has given him the ability to connect with people all over the world. Adam has three little Ys named Annalie, Arabelle, and Aston, who he coaches daily to become the best possible versions of themselves. He loves being a father, and that is what motivates him daily. When Adam is not working or spending time with his girls, you'll find him traveling, which is a favorite hobby outside of jiu-jitsu. you got to read his book. Oh, my God, it's often. It's called You're the Effing Problem, a guide to getting out of your own way. I've always believed everyone is their own worst enemy. I mean, they blame everything on everyone else, but it's you, man. And um, so that other good-looking guy on the screen, Max Zanon is a seasoned reinsurance industry expert with over 20 years' experience in sales, compliance, and management consulting. His goal is to help car dealers and dental practices improve profitability while increasing customer satisfaction and retention. Zanin published his five best-selling books on the topic of car dealership management. He is thought leader and um, disruptor. He is ready to introduce dental industry to battle-tested wealth-building strategies from automotive retail. And Max, I got to start with you. I know my homies like the back of my hand, and they don't even know what a reinsurance industry is, let alone an expert in it. So you're an expert in something right. they've never even heard of. So, so what are you an expert in? So, so let's start from the beginning. Both Adam and I uh, come from automotive. We are absolutely brand new to the world of dentistry. And our claim to fame in automotive is that we can take a wealthy car dealer and make that car dealer in, into an ultra wealthy car dealer. And we do it via warranties. So contrary to popular belief, Car dealers do not make money selling cars. Statistically, they actually lose between $200 and $500 per each sale. So how do they actually make money? Because it is probably impossible for you to meet a broke car dealer. And the way they do it is through their warranty portfolio. And that warranty portfolio allows them to build generational wealth. And I'll give you a perfect example. You can take a car dealer who's been selling warranties, let's say for 10 years, and the value of that warranty portfolio will always exceed the value of the car dealership. So what Adam and I did, we took this idea that we've been doing, you know, for almost five decades in automotive, we repackaged it for the dental. And now using the same math, the same approach, the value of the warranty portfolio of a dental practice that's doing it for five or 10 years will always, always exceed the value of their practice. Can you give an example of what a, uh, a warranty would be in a dental office? So, so let's, let's talk about warranties to begin with. 
right? So warranty is something, it's a concept that I think every consumer, including you and I, understand, right? Because we encounter warranties in our daily lives. For example, your computer, your refrigerator, television set, all of these items came with a warranty. So for some reason, the concept of a warranty does not exist in dentistry. And now we have a solution. So first, let's define what a dental warranty is. So a dental warranty is a type of a guarantee offered by a dental practice that covers the cost of certain dental procedures if they fail or need to be redone within five years. It provides patients with an added layer of protection and peace of mind knowing that they won't have to pay out of pocket for certain procedures if they need to be repeated or fixed. And uh, let's talk about the procedures so you understand that we're not here to cherry pick certain procedures and stay away from others. And, and please understand that neither Adam or I are, are dentists. So I'm just gonna read you the list of procedures that we currently cover. And uh, whenever we speak to dentists, they say that this is about 90% of what they do on a daily basis in their practice. So we warranty the following, fillings, bondings, crowns, buildups, posts, bridges, inlays, onlays, porcelain veneers, dental implants, abutments, implant crowns, dentures, partial dentures, sport mouth guards, bite splints, bruxism guards, snore guards, sleep apnea appliances, retainers, root canals, bone grafts, crown lengthening, gum grafts, and sinus lift treatments. Wow. Impressive? Very, very impressive. Very, very impressive. And, um, and how is, um, th that, that's amazing that, um, you, you've taken this from automotive and warranty. Um, are there caveats to it? Like you have to come in for your six month cleanings, you know, like car warranties. If, if you never got your oil changed for five years, they probably wouldn't warranty it. That's yeah, one that's of the front end benefits. Yeah, that's one of the front end benefits. I mean, one of the key benefits is, is retention. And we allow the dental practice to choose the interval in which they want to see their client back in the chair. Uh, we let the dentist choose between three, six, nine, and 12 months. We're noticing most people like that six month interval. So, you know, twice a year that customer's in the chair. And how long have you been doing this? And, and what, um, what have the dentists thought of this? So believe it or not, this is our fifth week on the market. So never mind 23 years of automotive experience, you know, this is our fifth week in the dentistry and uh, dentists absolutely love it. I mean, they're completely blown away by their idea. They're blown away by the fact that this concept does not exist that for some reason somehow you know uh we are the first to the market and uh, like adam mentioned you know we designed this program and we created five benefits right so there are four front-end benefits that every dentist understands and then there's the fifth benefit which is called reinsurance the one that you asked about before and uh, that's the one that we have to spend a little bit of time explaining. But I think the first four benefits are absolutely amazing and uh, enough for any dental practice to enroll into the program. So let's start with the first benefit, right? And again, we both come from automotive and I'm sure you know that automotive is extremely competitive. There are 18,000 new car dealers in America. So it turns out that dental is way more competitive than automotive because there are 200,000 practices in America. So now whenever a patient is gonna Google dentist and their zip code, and um, you know, I live in New York City, so at least 50 practices came up in my zip code. So I have a tremendous amount of choice when it comes to choosing a dentist. So just imagine using the concept of a dental warranty and uh, use that as a message to stand out from competition. Basically put this on your website, include this in your 
email and text communication with your patients saying that my practice is different. I am not like my competitors. I stand behind my work for five years. No matter what goes wrong, you come back and we're going to get this redone at no charge to you, no co-pays, no deductibles, no money out of pocket. So I think that approach alone should increase the patient flow into the practice. And the, the, so, and the consumer is ready for this because I noticed that um, I, I noticed that when the Internet came out, everybody, everything was free. And then when people try to get some money for it, they were just like, they just were blown away that everything is free. But I noticed with my grandchildren, I mean, they, they just expect they got to pay something for it. So I realized they don't have that bias. Well, it's the same thing when I go to Walmart. I, you can't buy anything in Walmart for over 100 bucks, and the, the automatic terminal, you know, asks you, do you want a warranty? And I asked the people, I said, do, do, do the people buy these? And they're mostly uh, sponsored by one big company or something. And they go, yeah, we sell them all the time, especially if it's gonna, an expensive item like a you know, TV or something like that. So, so I think this new generation, I mean, they get prompted by a warranty every time they go to Costco, Walmart, um, Best Buy. So it's kind of like that. Sure, sure. But imagine spending $5,000 on an implant. You know, I don't care what generation you are, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you would want well the warranty said. Well said. if you could, you, you know. So the second benefit is something that Adam just touched on, you know, where we allow the dentist to choose how often they want the patient to go back for the checkup. So let's say there's a, you put a crown in my mouth, right? And you say, Max, you got to come back every six months for a checkup. So I go back in six months and you say, Max, everything is okay with the, with the crown. However, there is a cavity and another tooth, and we should really take care of it while you're here. So this benefit alone accomplishes two things. First, we have this patient retention mechanism, right? That drives patients back into the chair. And at the same time, it provides an opportunity for the dentist to offer additional treatments if necessary, therefore increasing the revenue of the practice. Now, the third benefit is also really, really important because we are in a position where we can completely eliminate stressful conversations with patients and negative online reviews. So I'll give you an example. If let's say I paid that $5,000 for an implant, and four years down the road, something goes wrong. I don't know if I call you that you're going to say, hey, you know, no problem. I'll redo it at no charge. Most likely you're going to tell me that, Max, it's been four years. You know, let's be honest here. You know, it's not my fault. And if you want it redone, you should really pay for it all over again, which is fair. Right. But listen, not all people are fair. And some people might be convinced that it's the doctor's fault. Right. And they will go and blast your reputation on Google, on Facebook, on Instagram, on every social media platform. So now imagine the same scenario, but the patient has the warranty. And you say, hey, Max, no problem. Make an appointment. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll get it fixed at no charge to you. So now instead of having this stressful conversation, you look like a hero. Right. And when you look like a hero, chances are that patient is uh, going to leave a very good online review because don't forget, we are all consumers. Right. And I guarantee you that when you look for a restaurant to go have dinner and you come across one bad review, you immediately move on to the next restaurant. Right. So. If a patient, another patient is looking for a dental practice and they come across one nasty review because there's so many choices in the market, they immediately move on to the next practice. So again, we can completely get rid of that. And the, the final fourth benefit on the front end is, uh, is this. Dental procedures are extremely expensive, right? So if you sit me down and you say, Max, you need four implants and two crowns, it's going to be $25,000, right? That's a hard pill to swallow. But if you can back it with a five-year warranty, it becomes much easier for me to accept this particular treatment plan, 
So our goal is to increase treatment plan acceptance and therefore help the dental practice generate additional revenue. Nice. And then, and then, um, so walk us through the logistics of this. So, um, well, for, first of all, um, the, it's got to help with, with sales. I mean, um, you know, sure. when you, when you buy a car, car dealerships are always telling you this will be warranty a hundred thousand miles the, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, it, it has to help with closing the cell because if you have a whole, a lifelong of bad teeth where you've lost all your teeth, and you need, uh, say, all on four. That's twenty five thousand arch. That's fifty grand. That that's a car. That's a new car. Um, so so if if I was if if I, you you were telling me I needed a um um an all on four, and I'm like that's fifty thousand dollars, and I've always had bad teeth. And um, what if it doesn't work? I mean, what what would what would your language be to help me want want to um, believe in this the value of this treatment that'll be under warranty? So, so the warranty covers the patient for the exact dollar amount that that patient is going to spend on that procedure. So in this case, the patient would be covered for $50,000 for future redos and repairs. So I think that's the peace of mind that every patient needs, especially when you're getting ready to spend, you know, 25, 30, 50,000 dollars. And uh, the cost of warranty is, is not that much, believe it or not. The cost of the warranty is uh, 15% of the cost of the procedure. So on a $1,000 crown, the warranty costs $150, and the patient is covered for $1,000. So so the warranty is 15%. And is this something that... Um, 15 yes. What's that? 15, one five. Yeah, 15%. Um, when... Is that something that is just going to be brought up at checkout, like at Walmart, Costco, in a car? I mean, um, is, is that something that when you go to checkout, you say, okay, all on four is $50,000. Um, you know, would you like to uh, buy the extended warranty plan for 15% so, of the cost? or how? So, so I think mo- most people outside of automotive uh, – think of warranties and uh, extended warranties as the same thing but legally there's a huge distinction between the two so an extended warranty is something that can be sold and something that can be bought a warranty is something that's included in the procedure like a car warranty when you buy a brand new car it comes with a factory warranty you don't pay for it it's included in the price of the vehicle same thing when you buy a brand new computer, you know, it came, let's say, with a one year factory warranty. You didn't have to buy it, it's just included in the price of that computer. So, with our product, we do not expect and we cannot expect dentists to be selling it. It must be included in the cost of the procedure. So, what we are finding is that majority of the dentists are looking to increase their prices by 15%. To basically pass on the cost of the warranty to the to the patient. Okay, I know I know my homies. First thing they're gonna think is uh, they they spend their whole life fearing the one million attorneys in America, and so they they I mean they do they just they they fear the attorneys. So how does this? Um, okay, so I do it all on four. It fails. Um, I have the warranty. Um, does this? How how does this play into legal? Does that does it help me? Does it help prevent them from filing a claim to the board or finding a lawyer or? Oh, no, listen, at the end of the day, right? The, the patient wants his teeth fixed, right? It, it's, I don't think it's ever about legal action at all. At first they just want everything done, right? And I think the dentist has two options, right? Either he's gonna have to charge something to redo it or he will charge nothing right and just absorb the cost of the labor and materials to do the right thing by the consumer in our case if the consumer has the warranty the dentist can uh, file a claim and get reimbursed for that redo and do the right thing by the patient so you know i i think that's the ultimate goal here and there's a lot of news is too we, we, what we're doing too is we're putting the dental practice 
and ultimate control. They get to control the destiny. Max and I had the honor and the privilege to spend some time out in Las Vegas, some time down in Orlando. We're getting ready to exhibit at Greater New York. We're going to Yankee. We're going to Greater Chicago. And the concept that we brought up as far as sharing the underwriting profit back with the dentist, you should see people's jaws drop and their eyes light up. And and we'll, we'll talk about real quick the benefit on the back end. And Max, I don't want to steal your thunder. I'll give the intro and I'll let you kind of take it home here. But what Max and I are doing, I would love to say that we invented this. I would love to say that Max and I were just so brilliant and we figured and we created this. We didn't. Okay. We borrowed a proven strategy from the world of automotive, RV, power sports, boat dealers, motorcycle dealers, banks, other lending institutions, insurance companies. There's a reason when you look into the biggest cities in the country, the tallest buildings are owned by insurance companies and banks. We're taking a strategy that they've already been doing for the last five decades and we're sharing it with the dental industry. When Max sat down with me, this is this is how this started. I was about to keynote at the Bellagio earlier this year. Max was, it was an automotive contra- conference. Max pulled me aside said, let me share an idea with you. He ran me through his idea of this program for the dental industry. And I looked at Max square in the eye. I said, I love it. I want to be a part of it, but there's no way this does not exist. Max goes, it doesn't exist. Reinsurance does not exist currently in the world of dental. The research was done. We found out that it doesn't exist. So what Max and I have brought is a, is a wealth building vehicle the the dental industry that doesn't exist. So Max, let's break down underwriting profit in crayon because we, this is the part that we talked about. Most dental practices are going to understand the first four benefits. But when we talk about the fifth benefit here, we got to slow down a little bit, really explain this. So Max, if you want to break down underwriting profit, that'd be great. So, so, so Howard, we went over the, the, the four benefits, right? And, uh, you know, like the TV commercial, but wait, there is more. So, so the fifth benefit, the one that Adam is referring to, is the ultimate cherry on top. Because think of it this way. Every warranty, no matter the industry, is priced in a way that there should be money left over after all claims are paid. And that money left over after claims are paid is called underwriting profit. And because this concept is really new to the world of industry, I think the best way to explain it is uh, to talk about car insurance because I think most doctors drive, right? So, So let's say you have a car and your annual car insurance premium is uh, $2,000. So let's say you had a little fender bender and the insurance company paid out $700 in claims. So there's $1,300 left over. That $1,300 is the underwriting profit for the insurance company. Now, here's the most amazing part about underwriting profit. Underwriting profit is not taxable, period. So I guess insurance companies, you know, were able to lobby the Congress for the last gazillion years, and uh, they were able to get this done. So this $1,300 is not taxable at all. Now, when you pay the $2,000 for your car insurance, they don't put your money into a safe, right? Or they don't keep it in the mattress. They invest it in the market. So not only that they're making underwriting profit, they're also making investment income. An investment income is taxed as long-term capital gains. So it's not taxed as ordinary income. So, so now imagine a dental practice owning their own insurance company, where for every warranty that they generate in their dental practice, they remit that money to their insurance company. And after we pay out claims, And after we accumulate and compound investment income, like I said in the beginning of this podcast, you know, over the period of five or 10 years, depending on the, on the volume of production of the dental practice, that warranty portfolio will be worth more than the actual dental practice. Now, the money that accumulates in that insurance company 
is not locked away. It's really accessible to the dentist. So the dentist can use that money to either buy additional equipment, remodel a practice, buy out apartment, acquire a new practice. The money is available as it compounds. So it's an incredible wealth building opportunity because our research shows that when the dentist comes out of a dental school, the student loan debt is over $300,000. And then we went to a few conferences and we saw how expensive dental equipment is. So no wonder that statistically dentists are working into their 70s. You know, and now we have this tool where they can get more patients, retain more patients, and make more money to either grow their business or to retire sooner or to do whatever they want to do with the money. And um, the, the dentist, they're... There, you know, there's always a boogeyman in dentistry. That's why I love your book, Get Out of Your Own Way. I mean, just get out of your way. You're the problem. Get out of your way. I mean, when I got out of school, first it was capitation dentistry, and then it was PPOs. Now it's DSOs. It's the big box. I mean, there, there's big, there's big. you know, Heartland Dental has 2,000 offices. He's going to say, well, how do I compete with that? You know, they, they, they you know, so I, I know one of the first things they're going to ask is, does this give me an advantage over the big boys? I'm a small mom and pop. I'm an owner operator. I'm all by myself. Um, will this help me against Aspen, uh, you know, Heartland, you know, um, the big ones? I, I think the answer is absolutely yes, right? Because if the goal is to preserve independent dentistry, there is no way to do it than to stand behind your work and really make a compelling argument why your independent practice is way better than a big box Heartland or Aspen. And another thing too, at the end of the day, I I own uh, seven different companies and I know that the companies that are more profitable, I'm able to reinvest more back into that business to then in turn give more people opportunities for employment, to then in turn give more opportunities for new customers to come in. So to answer the question would be absolutely, because now these, say it's a smaller dental practice. Well, now they've got another wealth building vehicle there that's going to allow them to then potentially 10X the growth of their business and just help more people, period. You know, I, and, and, I did not get a warranty on my air conditioner, but I thought it'd be cool if I did. Right? So, so, um, talk, um, I, I'm just trying to think of how my homie's going to appreciate it. So, so I have an associate. Um, how does this change if I'm not, I'm the owner operator, my practices, we, we, I, I warranty everything. But my associate, Sam, did it. Um, and then two years later, three years later, you know, he's gone or whatever. How, how does it work with an associate doing work if I'm the owner-operator and I pay the warranty? Or does the warranty have to be so by the associate versus the owner? or how? No, so, so, so the warranty is in the patient's name, right? And, and the way the warranty is written is that if anything goes wrong, we want the patient to go back to the original practice that did the procedure, right? And uh, we don't differentiate between the owner and their associate, right? Because at the end of the day, the owner's name is on the door, right? Whether the associate is there or not is really irrelevant, right? So when the patient goes back to the practice, right? And let's say it was a $5,000 implant. So that patient is covered for $5,000. And whether the associate is there or not, somebody will have to back into that $5,000 to fix the problem. So the patient is always um, on top, right? The patient never is in a position that the service is not going to be provided. I'll give you another example. Let's say the dentist did the procedure or the associate, but then the patient moved to another state. So it would be unreasonable for us to require the patient to go back to, to the dental practice that did the original procedure. At that point, the patient is free to choose a brand new dentist in his new neighborhood 
And that dentist will call the 800 number on the contract, start a claim, and we will pay the claim the same day with a virtual credit card. So I want to go back uh, to Adam. Um, dentists are a unique bunch. I mean, you know, every every group is, is different. It has their little industry. Dentists are paralysis by analysis. They'll take something like that, and they got to do physics, calculus, biology. And I, I love the deal. Get out of your way. You know, my dad always told me, if you work like no – when I graduated from dental school, my dad said, if you work like no dentist ever has for 10 years, you will live like no dentist ever have the rest of your life. So how do you get them to go from – um, paralysis by analysis to just uh, do something, you know, is, is there any type of trial period? Is there any type of, uh, and, and then the other thing is the dentist, um, um, you know, it, it's his staff, you know, um, he's got to get a staff on board. How, how does he get his uh, office manager and dental assistant hygienist on board? Um, how, you know, is there a trial thing? You know, what, how do, how do they start safely and slowly? I'll start by saying this. Um, and this, this is a bold statement I say all the time. If we, if we continue to do what we're doing right now, we're going to continue to get what we've got right now. So if what we've got right now is enough, then let's just chill out. But if we want more, which I think we all desire more, then we have to do more. And we have to change. This, this, the world's different today than it was yesterday, and tomorrow's going to be boldly different as well. So I challenge any dental practice that is somewhat interested in this program reach out to Max Knight and we'll walk whoever through the program every single day of the week. We'll spend as long as it takes to help as many people as we can. Second piece to this is get your CPA involved, get your attorney involved. We've got a team of attorneys and CPAs. We can get together as a team and really break this down because we're bringing something that's different and unique to dental now. I mean, this has been around for a long time. It's going to take a little time to comprehend this. It's new. So I challenge people to A, be open-minded, B, be willing to change and look at something else a little bit different and C, let's do some homework and let's ask questions and let's get CPAs involved. And I'm sure Max, you'll agree with that. It's, we're, this is a, a, let's start a conversation so we can show you the path. And and Howard, I'll, I'll add one thing, you know, uh, yes, you, you, you're right. You know, paralysis by analysis, exists but what if we showed you the money real american dollars right and i'll give you a very conservative example let's take a dental practice that will only do this for five years and that dental practice will only generate 100 warranties per month Right. And when I say 100 warranties per month, I'm really talking about a single practitioner. Right. And you, you would probably know better. So, so Howard, how many patients on average does a single practitioner see a day? Oh, I'm sure, you know, the, the hygienist see probably eight to 10 and he probably sees 10 to 20. Okay. So let's get rid of hygienists. Right. Let's just say they're going to see 10 patients a day. Right. So, again, we're going very conservative. So if that dentist works five days a week, that's 50 patients a week. Right. And there are 4.33 weeks in a month. So that dentist will see 216 patients. So when I say that that practice will only generate 100 warranties, I mean a penetration of less than 50%, right? And let's say that the average premium amount is going to be only $150, right? So that means majority of the procedures that the dentist does are not that expensive. We're talking about, you know, probably a thousand to $1,500 procedures. So we're not even talking about, you know, the $5,000 implants or anything like that. So let's assume that every 10th procedure will go bad, meaning that the patient will need to go back for a redo. So again, if we do this for five years and then the dentist never does this again, after all the claims are paid, after all of the expenses, there will be over $1 million in reinsurance profit. And there will be over $126,000 
paid out in claims most likely to that practice, right? Because majority of people will go back to that dentist for a redo. And in our contract that says, if you happen to be within a hundred mile radius of that practice, you have to go back there for a redo or a repair, right? So instead of eating $126,000 of redos, that practice will collect $126,000 in claims, which will be ordinary income. It's as if the patient came in and paid with a credit card. And in addition to that, there will be $1,015,000 sitting in reinsurance profit that is taxed as long-term capital gains, not as ordinary income. This is the million dollars that they can have access to, to, like I said, buy another practice, buy out a partner, buy new equipment, remodel the practice. The choices are endless. There are no strings attached. I mean, if they want to buy a Ferrari, they can buy a Ferrari. So um, when you think of warranties, like when I go to Dental Town, I just typed in, you know, uh, warranty. And there's a lot of threads about um <laughs> They thought they had a warranty, but there was a breach of warranty on there on whatever. Um, are there what what is are there any breaches of this warranty or what what would make me think that I have a fifty thousand dollar warranty on an all on four and then three years later I find out that me or the patient did something wrong? What 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 are the what is that? So I'll give you an example from automotive, right? In automotive if you don't change oil, right, it's really easy for us to deny a claim if your engine fails, right? We can say, hey, Howard, you know, there's sludge in the engine and this one is on you, right? And uh, in automotive, we have uh, either retired service managers or trained technicians as claims adjusters, right, that answer the phone and they adjudicate the claim. Logistically, you know, what we do in automotive is that we can send an inspector to look inside that engine. We cannot do that in dental, right? I can't say, Howard, keep the patient in the chair. I'm going to send an inspector to look in the mouth to see if they ever brush their teeth. So logistically, we cannot do that. And we are not looking to do that. We're not looking to fight with a dental practice and tell them what to do, how to fix the, the problem. You know, we're not here to give clinical advice. All we're going to say is this. This patient is covered, let's say, for $50,000. So it is up to your dental practice to figure out how you're going to fix the problem as long as you back into that $50,000. And one thing too, Howard, just, just make this point very clear. We want to pay claims. We're, we're creating a pool of money, a very large pool of money for that dental practice to make it easy to pay claims, to make it easy for the customer to be happy, the patient to be happy. At the end of the day, that's what we want. And we're just creating another investment vehicle to make it very easy for the dentists to do that. And you said they could talk to you. Do, do, now, your website is dentalprotectiongroup.com, dentalprotectiongroup.com, DPG. Um, and there's a button there on the top, schedule a demo. But if they want to talk to you about this, um, how, how do they contact you? Is it best just to go to dentalprotectiongroup.com or call you? Or Dental what? Protection Group. Yeah, dentalprotectiongroup.com. I mean, our phone number is on there. Our email address is on there. Max, believe it or not, I mean, it's like 3 a.m. in Spain. Max has not slept. I think it's what seven years, Max. <laughs> I mean, Max, he does demos 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we're always available. So, well, I, I love the, the, and the website is very self explanatory. I mean, um, you know, protection plans for dental truths make your practice stand out from competition, increase patient retention, eliminate negative reviews. Increased treatment plan acceptance rates, simple coverage, nationwide coverage. Oh, by the way, what about my Canadians? They're 10% of the podcast listeners and Dentaltown. Um, we have we have something in we have something in store for uh for the wonderful country of Canada. We we we've got Max and I already have a have something up our sleeves. We'll be talking about that in the next few weeks. And then you say additional revenue uh, source, um, access to capital. Um, well, what is that? Yeah, I touched about that on your additional revenue source, access to capital. So whenever these reinsurance companies form, as we start 
seeding premium into these companies, there's a massive accumulation and then it's a tax to the investment income. So as this thing grows, the dental practice is going to have the ability, a couple of things. Number one, we can take a distribution. We can just take a check. Now you're subject to paying, you know, long-term capital gains. You got to pay a dividend tax if you do take the money or you can just borrow it from yourself. The dental practice will have the ability and we actually hold their hand. You know, we do this for them. We will help them, but they can actually take a loan out against the money that they have already put away, pay themselves back interest, and then it never triggers a taxable event. So there's a lot of unique ways to access capital. We can take them in the form of a distribution or in the form of a loan. And Max and I, we have hundreds of these reinsurance positions available out in the market today. Most of our partners, our clients will take a loan instead of taking a distribution. And your phone number is on that site. Can I say that on this uh, this deal? Yeah, absolutely. So their number is 212-813-6699. 212-813-6699 at Dental Protection Group. And uh, what? And to the Canadians, I already know the deal they're doing. Um, they told me before the show that you'll pay your premium in Canadian dollars, but they'll <laughs> warranty it in U.S. dollars. So that's a twenty-five percent bonus right out of the gate. Hey, that was beautiful. She's so generous. <laughs> what a hey, great so idea! Generous. Who thought of that, Max or Adam? <laughs> it was Max. He's, Max is way smarter than I am. <laughs> and uh, well, hey, um, well, well, I've got you on there. Um, t- talk about your book because you know. I raised four boys. I got eight grandchildren. I mean, people that want to spend all their time, like my, you know, they're always in, into the news. You know, they always want to talk about everything in the news and the problems and the economy and all this kind of stuff like that. But I look at them and I say, okay, here's your top three problems. You know, and you're not going to find them on the New York Times or on, you know, CNN or MSNBC or Fox News. Um, talk talk about your book. Um, um, Adam, I, I want to tell you, here, here's the deal that does. They're coming out of school, three four hundred thousand dollars in debt, and they're scared. And I um and and then they're afraid of the boogeyman. Like I say it was it was capitation, it was PPOs. Now it's dia. It, it's always something. But you know what? It's never the problem. The problem is never them. It's always the American Dental Association didn't do something right. I mean, they play, they talk about the ADA like they're their own mom. You know, they're, they're they're you know, whenever something goes wrong, you just blame it on your mom. I mean, why not? And um, so, talk to them about they're depressed, they're scared, and and this three or four hundred thousand dollar deal. I mean, God, within five ten years out of school, they're they're going to get a house loan for more than that, and the house is just consumption. I mean, they're, you're talking about a house loan to be a doctor of dental surgery in the United States of America. And, and when everybody's my age is 61, they're all fat cats. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not like I, I see zero empirical proof. It's a bad idea. There's no bankruptcy in America and Dennis, unless you have your license taken away. And the only reason they have their license taken away is usually substance abuse. And the reason they're abusing substances is because they live in anxiety and fear of all these invisible boogeyman's speak to, how does your book speak to them? So my book speaks to all of us, but let's just talk about the world of dentistry for a minute. So here, don't talk here, about uh, me, give, not me. Don't talk give, about me. Hey, I'm not going to talk about <laughs> no, you. I don't want to yeah. But I, here, I wrote the book. First of all, I wrote it for myself, but then I wrote it for my local community. And then it kind of scaled out. It basically a uh, short version is I went through a series of setbacks. You know, I had a lot of loss, financial loss, a spiritual loss, family. I mean, it was a really bad year, 2019. So I went through that, a, a short period of victim mindset. Woe is me. And then, one day I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I looked in the mirror. And that's where the title of the book came, came from. I said, Adam, you're the effing problem. All right. It's you. It's always been you. And I had to make a decision to get out of my own way. So here's the point to this. We can have anything we desire. Okay. We can have anything we want to, we desire. Okay. There's a couple things we have to do. Number one, we have to be self-aware. We have to be self-aware. We have to be able to look ourselves in the mirror, make decisions. Are we doing the things that are going to get us to the things that we want or are we not? Real simple. Number two, who are we spending our time with? If I want to be one of the most powerful dental practitioners in the industry, I need to reach out to the most powerful dental practitioners in the industry. I need to, I need to look for mentors. I got to start surrounding myself with those that are going to elevate me. And then We've got to spend less time in negativity and more time in positivity. You talk about the news. You're not going to find the answers on the news. You're going to find 
your answers with positive influences in your life. And so that book is a manuscript to basically get out of your own way and to put yourself in a position where you can grow to the next level. I wrote that book, not just for others, but I wrote it for myself because I was self-aware enough to know that, Hey, sometimes I need a little kick in my own butt and I'm not too proud to say so. And, And a lot of it has to do with ego. I challenge all of us step on your ego. You don't know it all better days await us. All right, we're going to go through sometimes some plateaus and some setbacks, but but the but the prize is at the end of the rainbow. All right, and I know Max and I are going for that prize, and I challenge others to go for it as well. I, I love what you said about the victim mentality. That's just the, the, that's perfect words. Um, like I say, the American Dental Association can't do anything right. Their mom didn't do anything right. It's the uh, it's the competition. It's the DSOs. It's the insurance company. Delta Dental will give these guys several hundred thousand dollars a year, and they can't think of one nice word to say about them. But I want to ask you this, Adam. Um, you're a jujitsu guy, but that to me that that that's physical exercise. Do you see a correlation? between not physical fit and victim mentality and um, when, when you don't take care of your tool that you live more in anxiety and fear and have bad thoughts? Absolutely. Those that are in tune with themselves, their body, their mind, their spirit perform at a higher level, not just vocationally, but just in the real world. But let's just talk vocationally for a minute. Absolutely. Those that are in tune, that are tight, right, that are fit, okay, do better, period. They just feel better. They look better. They sell better. They lead better. They sleep better. <laughs> they perform better. They make more money. Right? There's just all of these things that come with it. Okay. Last and final questions. I know I'm an over, I've gotten too long, but um, they're working for a DSO. Or they're, they're, not, they're not a DSO. They're not an owner operator. They're working for someone else. And for five years, all the, 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 the all their problems are how much they hate working in this office because they're I mean if your mom can't do anything right if the American Dental Association can't do anything right if the insurance if no one can do anything right well how the hell is your boss going to be uh, Mr. Right so they so so the boss can't do anything right and they just live there in misery and they they change jobs every year so they, they come out of school three four hundred thousand in debt they work here for a year five years until they're so miserable that they lose their fear and then they open up their dental practice and it's like, God, not you don't even have a 1% chance of losing. In the UFC, you have a 50% chance of losing. You have a 50, you know, how, how talk to that kid that, look, you're miserable. You didn't go to eight years of dental school to be somebody's employee. What would you, what would you tell them? Um, how can they get out of the way and just, be an owner operator. I mean, own your own family farm. You're not going to be, ha- no corn farmer in Iowa is going to be happy working for some corn farmer in Nebraska. How does your book talk to that guy to just, just go, go open your own office, be an owner operator? Well, I mean, the first thing we got to do is we have to prepare for, we got to get our money right. I talk about this, get our money right. Uh, we got to make sure we have the financial means because if I'm working for Max, and I might be miserable working for Max. He's pretty, he's pretty tough to work with sometimes. So I'm working for Max. He's the dentist. I'm the associate. You know, maybe I'm not in a financial position where I can jump off of the deep end. So what I would do is I would set myself up to, to jump off of the deep end, start connecting with others, maybe meet another mentor that can show me the way. Let If you're very clear with your mentors and you tell them exactly what you're looking to do, if they're a good mentor, they will lead you the path. They will lead you the right way. Number one, get your money right. Number two, find a mentor that's already done it. They will show you the way. For anybody that wants to jump, I'm telling you, you should jump. Maybe you shouldn't jump today. If you've got three kids at home, your paycheck is what's feeding those kids. Maybe you don't jump today, but you position yourself to jump tomorrow. But most importantly, you need to jump because that's where the good stuff is. And I'll just end on one thing is that, um, you know, I've seen this for, you know, for three decades that um, communication is tough, especially when all the dentists are introvert, you know, they're all introvert geeks and they don't communicate good. And then um, the patient spent a lot of money and it fails. And, um, and let's say, let's say they didn't pay their bill. Let's say they didn't pay $10,000. 
Well, now they got $10,000 of reasons, 10,000 reasons to go to the board to say, well, I didn't pay because something's wrong with it. So you always get your money up front. But I'll tell you what, if that patient, when you when they have a warranty and something goes wrong, they're not going to be thinking of calling the Arizona State Board of Dental Examiners or their attorney. They're going to be thinking, oh, dude, I, gotta, I don't care what happened to this freezer. It's covered by warranty. I, I want a new freezer. So I just think this will, um, what excites me the most about this, it's going to increase treatment plan acceptance rates and it's going to decrease lawsuits. Is that fair enough? Agreed. It is fair. 100%. Enough. You know, and one more comment, Howard, you know, to, to the dentist that's thinking about opening his practice, you know, if you make that leap of faith and you decide to take, you know, to take this step, then you have to be a pioneer. Don't be afraid to try new things, right? You don't want to be the last one jumping on a bandwagon. You want to be the first one. So if you can take this concept of a dental warranty and use it in your marketing, use it to increase patient flow, use it to increase retention, use it to actually stop absorbing the losses and avoiding the, you know, and, and, and going through the motions of a lawsuit or the peer review, you know, you know, forget the, like you said, paralysis by analysis, you know, just be the first one to do it. You know, that's the key to success. That's what makes entrepreneurs successful. They are not afraid to take risks. They're not afraid to try new things. Look at Adam and I, we have nothing to do with dentistry. And here we are on a podcast with you, the ultimate thought leader in the world of dentistry. Because we understand something that somehow majority of dentists missed the last 50 years. There's a tremendous opportunity both for the patient and for the dental practice. Well, since you use the F word in your book, you effing, I'm gonna I'm gonna say what my dad always told me. Either shit or get off the pot. Quit talking about it. Do something. Shit or get off the pot. Get the F out of your way. Just just do it. Mm-hmm. But uh Thanks so much for coming on the show and telling my homies Thank about you. it. It was an honor and a privilege to podcast both of you guys. Thank you. We're, we're happy to be here. It was a wonderful time. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.